We've got a new show here on the Locked On Podcast Network, Locked On College Basketball. One of the hosts, Isaac Shade, a host of Locked On College Basketball. Hopefully, you're going to be talking a lot about the Auburn Tigers and Bruce <laughs> Pearl. Maybe... Uh, running it back. They're certainly going to try to run it back and defend the conference for a second year in a row, but just kind of give us that national coverage view. What do you think of these Auburn Tigers? Well, Auburn's ranked 15th in the preseason, Zach, one of five SEC teams in the AP Top 25. Um, from a national level, man, that's where you want to be. But listen, the yeah. SEC is loaded yet again. And so honestly, within their, their own conference, um, I see a top tier with Kentucky, and Tennessee, and, uh, you know, uh, you could probably throw in there Arkansas as well. They're going to be young, and I probably would. And then I have both Alabama schools right in that second tier behind they're, that. They're both. so close. Yeah, yes. Auburn and Alabama yeah. are so close. And, yeah. and I think a lot of it is going to depend on what you get. And I know we're going to talk a lot about both of these guys, but what do you get from Johan Treor and what do you get from Janai Broom? And th with those unknowns, I think that's where the variability comes in. Yeah, just to be honest here, I mean, Janai Broom, little disappointed what I saw from him in the exhibition game last week. He, he's battling some like foot injury, but yep, he's got an he, ankle injury right now. Yeah. yeah. And you could tell he was favored a little bit. And, you know, we'll see what happens with that over the first few weeks of the season. But yeah. if he does what he was capable of, and Auburn saw it firsthand, Auburn played Morehead <laughs> State right. last year. Last year, yeah. Yeah. He, he owned it. He, he had a great game. But if he's able to do that, right, you talk about the, the hole that Walker Kessler's departure created. I think he can do some things that Kessler couldn't do. Probably not as good on the defensive end, but as far as back-to-basket scoring, yep. I, I may like his game a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think there's a possibility there for that to happen. Walker Kessler is this guy who wants to be a stretch four or five and just frankly can't. Um, his three-point shooting, both in his freshman season at North Carolina and in his sophomore year at Auburn, it just wasn't good, if we're being honest. Yeah. But obviously, he's second in the nation in blocks per game last year. Oh, by the way, who's third right behind him? Some guy named Mr. Janai Broom. And so, right. yeah, you expect to get that same level of defensive capability, probably with a little bit of drop-off. He's not going to be the 22nd pick in the draft next year. But I, I do like what you're saying, and I fully agree with that, Zach, that I think Broom can come in and potentially give you even a little bit more than Kessler did on the offensive end of the court, and that helps cancel out if there's any little bit of defensive uh, deficiency as compared to Kessler. Yeah. My biggest question mark about this team, you love the depth. You love yes. the effort. Bruce Pearl is going to have a scrappy team. They're going to play really good defense. They're going to wear teams out. But there's just going to be times, I think, Isaac, and we saw this even with Jabari last year on the team. Where are the points going to come from when just everybody's cold? And look, <laughs> it's it's college basketball. Those nights That's right. happen. That's right. Um, I, I don't know who's going to be able to step up. Who, uh, who's your guess? Yeah, that's a great question. You do lose in Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler, two of your top four scores, and they take away, I mean, it's between them near 28 points a game last year. Um, but you do get back your second and third leading scores in Johnson and Green, right, who both averaged 12 uh, points a game last year. You got six of your nine top scores back for Auburn. And honestly, in the transfer happy era that we live in now, yeah. not every team around the nation is going to get that. And so... I'm looking for both KD Johnson and Wendell Green. Absolutely. I think those are the two guys that have to lead the charge. And then third option, or, or maybe as he comes along, might even be a, a higher option, is going to be Johan Treor. Like, what is he able to come do? He's not going to be the, quite the shooter that Jabari Smith was, but essentially he's your guy that slides in and you hope you get that same uh near level that Jabari Smith did last year. I'm not expecting that same kind of jump. And he wasn't as highly rated as a recruit as Jabari Smith was. But here's yeah. one to kind of keep an eye on as uh, like a background option for that, maybe even something of an X factor for this team, is Alan Flanagan. Sure. How healthy is he coming back from last year's injury? Um, remember, sophomore year, he was scoring 14.3 points a game. Uh, last year came back, had six something points a game. And so not quite back to that level. And it was an but, ugly six something points. Again. <laughs> and Can't ugly, stress that yes, enough. yes. <laughs> we will stress that all day long. And so, but, but what if Alan Flanagan comes back and he is that dude again? So you combine that with what Johnson and green are going to do. Plus what it, if Treyor does what we expect him to do, I think you've got some scoring options. Now that's in terms of the players. Here's a spot on the floor where I think Auburn has to get better is from the three-point line. 
the, the final yeah. four season in 1819, 36th in the nation in three point percentage. The, the years since then, you ready for this? 309th in the nation, oh. 231st in the nation, 274th in the nation. So Bruce Pearl's team has to shoot with a higher efficiency from the line. And keep in mind, that's after you lose Jabari Smith's 42% from the three-point line last year. So you yeah. got to you gotta find that from somebody. And you look at, at, at your lead guards, I'm expecting a lot from Katie Johnson and Wendell Green, but they were not good three-point shooters. Yeah, but and he, go ahead. We, we can lump Zeb Jasper in there as well as that other guard there. So <laughs> Uh, I certainly think that that is a good point. And then it didn't look better in the exhibition game, right? And exhibition games don't matter. I mean, sure. in Auburn's final four year, they, they lost to Barry. It was very <laughs> bad. I love making that joke. But but yeah, so I mean, how much of these exhibition games actually matter? That I, I don't think that they do. Yeah. But I mean, it's not even your starting five that he had as his starting five. I mean, it's... That's throw, true. Throw That's true. Like, is, is Dylan Cardwell probably going to start over no. Janai Broom? Like, no. I, I don't think so. Yeah, no, I'm there with you. I'm there with you. But some of the stat lines look similar though, right? Like a Katie Johnson... When he was cold at times last year, like I think it was one of seven from the floor uh, against UAH a few days ago. And it's like, that needs to be better. Like, that just needs yes. to be better. You know, uh, he, he didn't make a three despite attempting several. And it's just <laughs> all of these things. If they're all just a little bit better, it goes a long way, Isaac, when you talk about a Katie Johnson, a Wendell Green, a Zepp Jasper, and Alan Flanagan. Absolutely. And that, that was my biggest issue with Auburn last year is these guards are phenomenally talented. Sure. But they're so inconsistent. They're so inefficient. And by the way, they're pretty small, right? Like you've got Johnson Green and Jasper all 6'1 or under. And so you have to get that height from Flanagan. You need Westry to get back healthy and be in this lineup because they're both 6'6", more kind of wings. But man, Bruce Pearl needs those dudes in the lineup to help things out from the wing. Plus you add in freshman Trey Donaldson, uh, top 40-ish recruit. He's a little bit bigger at 6'2". And, and I think that could help. But uh, to your point, Zach, I mean, for me, Auburn basketball in 2022-23 goes as far as Katie Johnson and Wendell Green can take them. Mm -hmm. I'm with you on that. All right. I want to talk about Auburn's place in the standings. We kind of talked about them in Alabama being very close and Arkansas and Kentucky probably being a little bit ahead of them right now. Before we jump into that, tell us about Lockdown College Basketball. How can folks find it next week? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the YouTube page is already up and live. You can go subscribe to that right now. Locked on College Basketball. Uh, social media stuff will be coming soon, but you can find it. We've got uh, a link tree that's got all the links going. My, my co-host, Andy Patton, has already made that. This dude is such a great basketball mind, and I am thrilled to be hosting that with him. But our, our first show will be coming out on Monday. We're going to be five days a week, just like all the other Locked On Network shows, and cannot wait to continue advancing what our network does. Yeah, and I'll put those links in the episode description down below, both on YouTube and audio, so be sure to check out our friends Isaac and Andy on Locked On College Basketball. All right, Auburn's chances of running it back, is, what, what, what would you kind of say <laughs> that at? 50%, 40%, 30%, or, is, or are all of those even too high? No, I don't think those are too high, but I wouldn't put it at 50%. I, yeah. I, I mean... I would put it in the 30 to 40% range, both because of the teams that I think are ahead of them right now with what we're projecting and just having 14 teams in one of probably two or three strongest conferences in the sport. Um, and so in terms of like, are they going to be able to repeat? It'll be tough. Again, I think there's a top tier with Kentucky, Tennessee, and Arkansas. And I think Auburn and Bama are right behind that. Sure. Um, and, and you've got, those are your five preseason ranked teams, Kentucky at four, Arkansas, 10, Tennessee, 11, uh, Auburn's at 15 and Bama at 20. And, and don't forget, you got Texas A&M like at 26. They're in the others receiving votes. And then Florida as well is in the others receiving votes. So, I mean, goodness. That's, that surprised you at all? Florida got some votes? Ab absolutely it does. They're um, with Todd Golden coming in for the first time. Yeah. Everything they've lost, four or five transfers coming in. Now, if they hit, they've got the, they've got the roster. But I compare it to like in, in a bullpen game in baseball. The more times you open that bullpen door, the more opportunity there is for somebody to come out and not throw well. And and Florida's bringing three or four guys up a level from mid-major, and I, I I just don't trust that every one of them is going to hit. So no, I don't see that right now. Sure, um, I, I'm there with you. Yeah, I'm there with you. So so for Auburn, um, it, it's going to be tough. Um, 
and and part of it for me is the non-conference schedule is pretty weak. Zero top twenty-five preseason teams in Bruce yeah. Pearl's preseason schedule, which is uh, unusual for Bruce. Yes, yes, exactly. And so I, I was a little confused by that. I don't know if that scheduling is out of they didn't think they'd have what what they have because I think it's I think it's a roster that could do well against a better non-conference. Well, schedule. they scheduled they scheduled Memphis, right? Maybe they yep. thought Memphis would yep. be a little bit better. And USC and Washington, those Washington, are the other, the yeah. other big ones, the other yeah. notables. And so right. the question then becomes, how ready are you for SEC play when that comes around? It might take a couple games in with that. And can like man, Auburn in January last year, I was like, this team is a Final Four team, but then there's just that slow decline yeah. uh, to the end of the season, and so. How, how do you do better? Um, and I think being 12 deep helps in a big way with that. No doubt about it. And then, I mean, that that decline that you kind of referenced is a little uncharacteristic from what Auburn fans have seen since Bruce Pearl kind of turned the corner with his program. Yep. I mean, obviously the Final Four run, they, they peaked at the perfect time. Um, and then the COVID year, they were really peaking. And it's like, man, here team. we go. We're doing it again. And then, you know, obviously everything got canceled. Yeah, they were 25 and six that year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, and then they like finally, like Isaac Okoro started scoring the ball. And it's like, finally, the lottery pick wants the ball. This is great. Um, But yeah, the, then all that happened. And then since then, it, that kind of hasn't really happened. So yeah. we'll, we'll see if that changes how we rotate guys moving forward. Um, but, but once but again, outside of that 2020, 21 year, yeah. I, I would say it's been one of the like five like the past five years, maybe the most consistent SEC team. Uh, you look at two That's, regular seasons. Is that weird? I mean, you, you've covered basketball your whole life, right? You, yeah. you've, you, you, is that weird now that like Auburn that Auburn's basketball, that level? Yeah. They, they, you could say that? Yeah. Absolutely it is, while not being able to see it about Auburn football. Like that feels so bad. <laughs> Like, sure. give me some Chris Porter, right? Like, th- that's my dude from like the 97, 98, that kind of era. Yeah. Uh, so, but it, but it's cool, right? We want more teams to rise up and, and like, I don't want to see Kentucky just run the gamut every year. I don't want to see Gonzaga just run the gamut every year. I want conference level competition. And Bruce Pearl's been able to do that. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Isaac, good luck to you launching this show, Locked Thank on you. College Basketball. If you were watching or listening, check out the links in the episode description to make sure you subscribe to Locked on College Basketball. Thank you, brother. Thanks for having me.